I noticed reading a lot of the comments that a lot of people have um, struggles with self-confidence, which makes a lot of sense because I think a lot of us do. My specialty as a coach for gay men is creating self-confidence from the inside out. Now, what does that mean? That means developing your skill to believe in yourself. And then from there, what happens is self-confidence becomes a natural byproduct of that. So it's not something you try to be. It's just something that occurs naturally as a result of from learning how to believe in yourself. And that's what I teach. Now, in my teachings and in my sessions with clients, the topic of self-doubt comes up all the time. Makes sense, right? A lot of people believe that people who are self-confident don't ever feel self-doubt. And that is simply not true. It is a myth and anyone who you perceive out there as confident has struggled with self-doubt. And people have gone on record as talking about this. People like um, Beyonce, people like Mark Zuckerberg, they talk about their, their struggles with self-doubt and you would think these two people are quite confident, right? So here's how it works. And, and actually what I'll do is I'll give you an example in my own life of how self-doubt can be exactly the place you want to be in to work towards your feelings of self-confidence and greater self-worth. So here's what happened to me today, this morning. It is quite fresh in memory. <laughs> okay, so I was doing a consultation call with a potential client and the call was amazing. We connected really well. I knew for sure that I could help him. Um, I made my offer towards the end of the call and ultimately he decided he didn't want to enroll, which is fine, that's his choice. The call was over and after the call ended, because he didn't enroll, my automatic shame response kicked in. And for me, what that looks like is a lot of um, imposter syndrome thoughts and a lot of self-criticism. So the thoughts I was having in the moment were, um, see, I, I told you you can do it, or um, you should have done this, or you shouldn't have done that, or why are you even bothering this? I told you this wasn't gonna work. You know, no one wants to coach with you. All of that, all of that shame and self-critical response was coming up for me. And when that happens for me, when those thoughts are the ones that are going through my mind, how that shows up in my body is for me, I usually get a really deep, heavy feeling in the pit of my stomach and my breath will kind of go shorter and more constricted and I'll feel a bit of heaviness in my chest. So in that moment, I knew what was happening. I was like, okay, I recognize this is my self-doubt who has decided to show up at the party and come to tell me that I'm not good enough to be a coach and I'm not good enough to be an entrepreneur and I'm not good enough to do all these things that I'm doing. A lot of times we listen to this voice and we indulge in it and we let it really get the best of us. Other times we completely avoid it or shut off from it completely and try to just shut it down and put it away. Neither of these are particularly useful responses. What is a more useful response, and this is what I teach, is to acknowledge it, let it all up, look at all the thoughts that are there, and then from there, use that as an opportunity to develop your self-worth and self-compassion and ultimately from there, self-confidence is built. So what does that look like? Okay, so for me, in this particular case, I told you all the thoughts I was having in that moment. You're not good enough, why are you doing this? You know, you shouldn't be a coach, no one's gonna wanna coach with you, blah, 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 blah. Notice I didn't ignore it, I let them come up. And I looked at those thoughts and I thought, okay, well, this is simply my self-doubt doing what it does. Self-doubt is going to show up and it's going to invite you to the self-doubt party. You can choose to attend or you can choose to look at it and have a make a better choice. So what I did is I decided, okay, this is here as an opportunity, as an invitation to practice my sense of self-worth. 
So what kind of thoughts can I have that are more aligned with self-worth and self-compassion? And so what I came up with are things like this. I'm proud of you for trying. I'm learning as I go. Not everyone's gonna be a yes, but that's okay. Nothing has gone wrong here. Um, my worthiness is not tied up in how many clients I have or how many clients even say yes. My worthiness is innate and my worthiness is untouched by anything that is outside of me. Other thoughts I could choose to think are, um, you know, I'm learning, I learned from the fails, I, I'm learning from rejection, and I'm taking really good nuggets of wisdom for my next consultations. So these thoughts make me feel a bit better. I feel a bit more at ease, a bit more neutral. That heaviness in the pit of my stomach seems to start to dissipate. I can breathe a bit more freely and more clear. And suddenly things start to feel a bit better. Now, notice how I don't necessarily feel confident right away. Like, yeah, I feel great. I can do anything. But that's the point. There is this myth, as I mentioned earlier, that confidence means an absence of doubt. In fact, the truth is, confidence is knowing that doubt is going to show up anytime you are living a life with goals in it, or you're going to be stepping out of your comfort zone. Doubt will always show up on that journey. What makes somebody confident is how they deal with the doubt. So knowing that doubt is gonna show up, I'm gonna get triggered in all the ways that I get triggered, and if you have your triggers, we all have our triggers. And then knowing how to talk yourself off of that ledge, so to speak. How to treat yourself with self-compassion. How to, in that moment, acknowledge how you feel. In the gut, it feels terrible. But then realize that you can pivot with a bit of kindness and compassion and thought and, and deliberate thought choices into a more neutral place. And then from that neutral place, you can pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and then keep going when you are ready, All right? It doesn't have to be immediately. Some, some rejections and some failures take a little bit longer to recover from, other ones are fairly quick. And, and as you develop the skill, what happens is that period of time between the failure or the rejection and getting back on the horse, so to speak, becomes lesser and lesser and lesser as you practice the skill. Okay, so just as a reminder, next time you're confronted with self-doubt, I want you to notice how it shows up for you. What thoughts are you thinking? Where is it coming up for you in your body? Don't indulge in it, yet don't avoid it. Just treat it with kindness and compassion. Respect yourself to respect your own feelings as valid. Notice where it comes up, and then when you're ready, choose a better feeling thought that will get you closer to self-compassion and self-worth and then from there you can move back on on the path towards your goals and creating that life that you want to create okay guys have a great rest of the week look forward to our next video on thursday and all the best be well